continuing with uh, the history of mediumship, this is relatively recent history in my world, um, Sylvia Brown. And she had some very egregious errors that were later proved to be beyond egregious, just awful, horrible things. And they may have been the downfall of her career because they were exposed. Doing cold readings, doing hot readings, all that is one thing. But when you get into the psychic detective world where you're where you're publicly on TV talking about solutions to crimes that we will eventually figure out, and then when it's found out that you didn't do it right, it, it's it's very bad for your career. So Sylvia Brown, for those of you who don't know her, was a very, very popular psychic medium. She was born in 1936. She died in 2013. She was um, a star, an absolute star of the psychics of her time. She was on uh, the Larry King live show, which was interviews, just given softball questions by Larry King on CNN, which was a kind of a newish station. It was a new station that was, oh my gosh, she got so many uh, views, probably millions of views every time she did an interview with uh, Larry King. She also was on a daytime TV show that was very popular called the Montel Williams Show. And Montel was one of those enablers who thought it was funny that she was talking to the dead. He thought the whole thing was funny. That's what he said. And it was it was really bad. But uh, what was the worst part of Sylvia Brown is that they would bring on these parents onto the Montel Williams show. I think she used to do this with Oprah Winfrey, too. Oprah Winfrey has a lot to be accounted for. Um, so <laughs> Sylvia Brown would go on to Montel Williams. They'd bring on these parents whose children had been abduct abducted or something had happened. And they'd come on and they'd say... You know, what's going on with my child? Where is my child? Is my child living and dead? Will I see them again? That kind of thing. And Sylvia Brown would give her, her, I don't know, pull something out of her, her, you know what, to just to say something that would give her ratings. Now, at the time, we don't have the result. We don't know what's going to end up happening with whatever she did. But years later, you know, Sylvia Brown didn't predict the, the internet. <laughs> that we'd be able to go back and look at transcripts and look at old videos. In a bunch of cases, she was incorrect and so obviously incorrect that it was harmful, just egregiously wrong. I'm going to tell you one story, and this is Amanda Berry. And um, that's, that's all I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to show you a video. I have a few screenshots to show you. Um, let me show you for those of you guys who don't know who Sylvia Brown is, which is unusual if you don't, but that's okay. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who everybody is either. You could show me some pop star right now that's got mega hits and I wouldn't know who that person is probably either. So these are really grainy. I just pulled them off of a video that is very grainy. And this is Anderson Cooper here. He's also on CNN and he did a, uh, expose of all of sylvia brown's really awful most egregious problems and you can find it on the internet um he said uh dead wrong and it was just an interesting interesting picture of her interesting expose because the media had been had been very kind to her over the years and they hadn't been um you know calling her out for her bs they were just like oh so how did you find out you had your powers sylvia and, you know, that kind of nonsense. All right. Sylvia Brown, I've told you who she is. You can look her up. There's a whole Wikipedia page, lots and lots of information on her. All right. So in 2004, this is, we'll go back a little bit. 2004, a young girl, I think at the age of 16 or so, was leaving her job at Burger King in Cleveland, Ohio. And um, a car pulled up beside her and inside was her uh, her friend's dad and he said hey you want a ride and she says yeah I'll take a ride he took her for a ride and then he said I'm going to go back to my house because your my daughter your friend is there 
and and she says oh yeah i'll go with you so he took her to his house and then he took her into the basement and he locked her up to a pole um that was there changed her up and she never left that house again for 10 years and there was two other women who were there who were who had been captured so there was the three of them there for years and um horrible 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 things happened to them we're not going to get into it there's I, I think they've written a book but what ends up happening is amanda berry she's the youngest of the three she ends up um, they were at times able to watch TV. I think they were chained up and they were able to watch TV at times. And Sylvia Brown came on the Montel Williams show and she was going to talk to Amanda Berry's mother. Okay. So here is Amanda Berry held cap captive. I think she's like captive six years by this time, five or six years. And she's thinking Sylvia Brown is going to tell her mom where she is in Cleveland, she's alive and the address and come get her and everything. Well, she doesn't. So what Sylvia Brown does, and let me um, show you, this is a picture from the video. And like I said, you can find this video online. There's a lot of videos out there. This is Amanda Berry's mom. And yeah, I'm sorry, it's grainy. And it's from the Montel Williams show, Paramount Domestic Television. And she tells her Amanda Berry's mom, she says, well, Amanda Berry's mom says, will I ever see her again? And Sylvia, very in her kindly way, in heaven on the other side. I hate this when they're in water. She's not alive, honey. So that was just devastating, obviously, just completely devastating to the mother to be told that her daughter's in water dead and she'll never see her again except when she gets to heaven well the mother was so devastated that she took down all her photos of amanda uh, gave away amanda's computer and then the mother died in 2006 a, a couple of years after this everybody says of of a broken heart and that's where we were until then in what year 2007 uh 13 in 2013 and i remember this clearly it was like all over the news it was incredible amanda berry had given birth to a child a little girl that was six years old at this point and these three women and Amanda uh, and, and the child are kept in the house. Now she's kept the baby she has is obviously the kidnapper, the, the person who had harmed her child. And one day, the person who had imprisoned him, um, he had double locked the doors. It was this two-story big house in Cleveland. And he normally locked the doors with these big bolts, um, double locked them. And one day he went out the door and he didn't lock one of the locks. So, so we closed the door and locked it, but not the other door and locked it. And she took advantage of that. And she opened up the door and she started screaming and beating on the one door that was locked. And then one of the neighbors who didn't know that there was these women being held kidnapped, you know, being held in this house for 10 years, plus a child now that was given birth in the house. They'd never been out. So uh, she started beating on the doors and finally... A neighbor says, what the heck is going on? And he, he went over and, oh, here's the missing picture of Amanda Berry photographed uh, as her, her age progressed. Sorry, you guys. Yeah, it is blurry. She was, I think, 16 whenever she was abducted. And then um, 10 years later, oops, there's a mother again. And Amanda Berry, she's, she gets out of the door. The neighbor helps her get out of the door and she calls 911. She, and there's a recording. You can hear this recording. She says, I've been kidnapped. My name is Amanda Berry. I've been missing for 10 years and now I'm free. It was a big freaking deal. Okay. So the, the thing about it was, I mean, that's off, obviously wonderful. The other uh, two women are released and the little girl is released. And you can read their story in books right now. And um, I believe Amanda Berry has a, a podcast you can listen to where she's trying to help people who have um, missing children and so on. 
So what happened to Sylvia Brown? Well, well, she's got a scramble, right? Because she has been already told the mother that the the girl is dead. Um, she's in water and and so on. Well, the, the girl was alive and well, she wasn't well, but she was alive and she had a child. Well, at the time Sylvia Brown was talking to her mom, she didn't have the child. She was a year or so later, she gives birth to the child. And so Sylvia's reputation, you know, this, this, this comes out because we were all surprised. The world was surprised. Amanda Berry and these two other women are out and there's a child. What the hell? How could Sylvia Brown have told the mother this horrible thing about her daughter being dead and in water and you won't see her again? And she, Sylvia Brown took a huge hit. She had a Twitter account. She had a Facebook account. People were ripping on her and just, I mean, they had to take, they had to uh, stop the Twitter account for a while. They had to take it, you know, um, suspend it. So, because she was getting so much hate, same with, same with, same with Facebook. And um, Sylvia Brown, wow, she just got hit big time. She continued. I mean, she came back because there was a lot of people out there who were apologists for Sylvia Brown and saying, oh, she must have been confused. And she didn't actually say that, you know, she didn't really mean it. And I guess the mother isn't going to see the daughter until ever again, until heaven, because the mother died while waiting for the, you know, until the uh, Amanda was released. And, but no, come on, you guys, that's not right. So that's what happened with Amanda Berry. That's the story of Amanda Berry and Sylvia Brown and her egregious error. There's the cat along. This is a piece of history that we often talk about. And I hope that you guys can look into this. There's a Wikipedia page. If you type in uh, Amanda Berry, you will find the Wikipedia page for Ariel Castro kidnappings. That's the man who, who abducted her. Um, the the three women got the house and they had it, um, you know, completely destroyed. I think they even had the pieces of the house destroyed and, and he is no more. He went to prison, went to jail and, um, he killed himself after a month in jail. So they never even got to go to, um, um court with him or anything like that. So as far as I know, they're doing as well as can be expected. And the little girl is now 16 years old. And Sylvia Brown messed up. Let's just briefly talk about that. Sylvia always said that she was like 95% of the time right. Well, there's a lot of problems she had were things she did that were not right. And I, I may get into those in other videos uh let's just see how you guys if you like this video i can talk about some of the other egregious things that she did so um you in my opinion you really don't have any business telling a mother or a father or anyone anything like this it has repercussions you're not even aware of the Amanda is watching this in this house chained up. And can you imagine what that did to have to see Sylvia Brown telling her mother that you're dead. So give up looking for her. I believe Amanda said that she had every anniversary of her, her kidnapping her mom and her family would have these vigils and they would, you know, do these big, you know, like we're looking for you. We miss you. We want you back. If you ran away, please come home. All is forgiven. Um, if anybody has any information. So Amanda used to watch these and she would feel elated and, and that they were still looking for her and they still cared and they still wanted her back and they hadn't given up on her. And I don't know what happened after the fact, but I don't know if, well, we know that Amanda's mom, she died soon after 
and I don't know if Amanda actually kind of started giving up hope herself, but because she had her own little girl to think of, uh, she she took the chance when she could. Brave, brave, brave person to have uh, done what she did. All the windows were had been you know nailed up and everything. So very scary, incredible, strong woman. Um, but I want you to know the story. Because it is a standard, a touchstone in the mediumship community of how, um, you know, and it makes you go back to thinking about people say, oh, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with telling people these things. So, well, you know, maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. It's what's the harm, you know, and we're give hope and no, you should not mess with people's emotions. You should not manipulate people. Silver Brown had no idea she was making it up and for tv ratings or for whatever reason she knew darn well that she was making it up my cat's more psychic than she is and my cat is not psychic <laughs> it's it's just wrong and i think you guys probably would agree with me when you start thinking about it um please um let me know if you want me to do more of these dives into history um we do have a couple other videos of Sylvia Brown on the channel. One was my, my boyfriend in 2010. He punked Sylvia Brown at the Sylvia, um, in LA. And there's a video up of it. It's not too long. And it's um, pretty interesting because she, Sylvia Brown and Montel Williams were on the stage when he got up and asked a question and You'll have to see it. It's really great. I'm so I'm so glad my friend Paula was there to record what happened because it's it's it, intense. And Sylvia Brown and Montel knew damn well what he was doing. The rest of the audience didn't know what was going on, but they knew what Mark Edward was doing, and they were like, "Okay, this guy knows we're not that uh, Sylvia is not psychic." He knows exactly what's going on. And she never came back to LA again after that. She did. She died, I think, um, what did I say, 2013? And it was a sudden death. I mean, it wasn't like she was bedridden after that, but he punked her in 2010. And I think she came back for one spirit circle, something like that, but she never did an auditorium again. Not again after Mark Edward punked her in 2010. So check out that video. Very interesting. Please like, please share, please leave your comments. You know how this works. Turn on your alarm bell so that you know when I've uploaded another video and have a great, great evening, morning or whatever else that you're going to be having. And look this stuff up. It's fascinating. Really, it is.